poker's legendary champions, next generation stars, and tireless ambassadors of the game, sharing their wisdom and guiding your journey to high achievement on the green felt. This is Tactical Tuesday on Chasing Poker Greatness with your hosts, Brad Wilson and John Chai. Welcome, 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 my friend, to another episode of the Chasing Poker Greatness podcast. As always, this is your host, the founder of ChasingPokerGreatness.com, Coach Brad Wilson. And before John and I jump into Tactical Tuesday, just wanted to take a second, let you know that my latest course, Live Cash Preflop Bootcamp, is completed. It's on the market, ready for consumption, ready for sale, especially right before WSOP when... You may be going out to Vegas and battling in some full ring cash games. I just, yeah, I know that it's very obvious that I, I can't recommend my own my own course highly enough, but uh, I can't recommend my own course highly enough. You know, just going through the process of making the course taught me so much about the way that uh, nine max actually works and, you know, where just the major failure points of most villain strategies are and come from and how to exploit that and really, yeah, just feel exceptionally confident um, in my own preflop game, nine max after making the course. And yeah, so for you, the the consumer learning that information that's, you know, been distilled through my own filters, just it's really difficult you know the course is 499 it's really difficult for that 499 not to pay for itself um within a few months if you're playing any amount of live poker at all if you play 25 it might pay for itself in one hand or might save you a stack like yes. the first few orbits very, or something so. very very likely you know it's um i think that in the poker space in general like these like poker educational products like the the interesting thing is like the bigger stakes you play uh, the less you need to get from any single product for it to essentially pay for itself. And like the cost of education in the poker space, like I, I know that 499 is not nothing, but when you, when you put it into relative perspective of how much money you play for every time you sit down at poker, um, the cost just, you know, becomes kind of laughably inexpensive if you're putting in significant volume and have a desire to actually play better and win money. And I know that like, what people play for many different reasons. And that's not always the reason why people play cards. But, you know, if you're interested in uh, Chasing Poker Greatness as the name of the brand, uh, then investing into education, learning, trying to find edges wherever you can. I mean, this is a necessary component to maximizing your own poker potential. And if you don't buy Live Cash Preflop Bootcamp or any of the CPG courses, just want to challenge you to you know, seek out educational material somewhere. You know, you're listening to this episode, which means that you care about learning, growing, getting better, playing this card game. So major barrier to entry is to spend money. I definitely cannot uh, advocate for that for that enough in, in this space. So, I mean, obviously, uh, I'm incentivized to, to say all these things and I realize that and I realize like it's very easy to be skeptical. But if, you know, if the courses that I sell and the courses on the market don't have an ROI of like 5x, 10x, then they're not, you're not going to sell many courses, right? So the goal is for them to be as valuable as possible. So anyway, that's my, my spiel for Live Cash Preflop Bootcamp. That's at ChasingPokerGreatness.com. And now after advocating for live poker and all of these things, we're going to move back to the online streets where John currently lives uh, this week anyway. Who knows? It's you know more of a extended stay type of situation than I think a, an actual home home situation. We're in Bluffcatchville this week yeah. online. <laughs> oh, Bluffcatchville. <laughs> that's that's the yeah, thing. Yeah. We have a different We're not value theme? betting. We're not value betting this week. Surprise. Whoa! I'm totally caught off guard. I don't even <laughs> I don't even know what to say. We're we're bluff catching now. Okay, okay, okay. So let's see how. Let's see how bluff catching goes after looking at value betting for the past few weeks. Uh, so break down the action for us, John. Uh, so we have a post from a fish in the cutoff. Um, I think he just checks, I assume. The button ISOs, buttons are reg. 
I have ace jack offsuit in the small blind. Uh, going to be a pretty standard three bet for me. I make it 120 over $30 open. Everybody folds back to the button who calls. And we're about $900 or exactly $900 effective. Um, All right. Flop pretty is ace, flop. ace, king, four. Pretty good. Pretty good for the pre-flop three better. Um, ace, king, uh, four, rainbow. Okay, so now now that we're here, I have a confession to make. Sure. I had no fucking idea what I was doing <laughs> <laughs> in this hand for everything up, up up to here. Yeah, okay. Uh, I knew what I was doing, but like, uh, just full disclosure, we've been kind of tinkering with some of our, our wolf strategies and, um, you know, just, just trying to make some upgrades. Uh, we're in the middle of making one of those upgrades, and I, I haven't fully fleshed out the strategy yet which is why i got lost here didn't know what to do um let's just let's just break this hand down assuming that we have no strategy and you're just looking at like a student that you know is like hey how do i how do i play this spot sure i, I mean think the easy way to play it is to just bet a third on yep. this type of yep. board and you know villains naturally have to overfold to compensate <laughs> for that third because you have like ginormous equity advantage on ace king four because you've got all the ace kings they typically four bet the ace kings you've got aces you've got kings um they don't because they typically four bet those or they have them at a reduced frequency so yeah basically like betting um range for a third is the easiest thing to do yeah i think that's that's what i would have done pre pre upgrade attempt um mm -hmm. you know like i said i had no idea what it was doing after preflop so i probably didn't bet a third i think there's merit in checking too i, I think oh! like there there's i mean dude you you get like a, we did it. a you get a hugely favorable flop for us like you can bet or you can check and it's like checking can't be like a disaster okay 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 all, all options are on the table like the world is kind of your oyster here <clears throat> um so you go for check because that's the the path that you have no idea what to do after it <laughs> well done um fill in checks behind oh okay that's good that's good i mean again the check behind should be somewhat anticipated Right, that's going to be the highest frequency event because all the yep. things that I said about this board and the situation, uh, rag at you know one KNL online is going to know the same things that that I know, and they're going to respond by saying, "Oh, you've got all the best hands here. You should probably be range betting um, because you decided to check. I'm going to check back most of my range so that mm -hmm. I can you know realize some equity." Mm -hmm. So they do, and the turn is a queen of spades. So now the board is ace, king, queen, four. You have the ace of spades. Um, you block jack, ten. Uh, the queen, you know, gives them more two pair. Um, yeah, I, I think, yeah, let, let me hear your thoughts, I guess, before. <laughs> I have no um, thoughts. I, you have I no just, thoughts? You just lost I, again? I have no thoughts that are, like, worthy of of making it into this to this discussion um i mean i think again you can bet probably should bet at this point uh like a third wow that's that's what i did um well good well, it well felt done. weird i mean it's just not a thing that i ever do where i check the flop and then bet a third out of position on the turn but again it sort of felt like the right thing to do here yeah. once i check the flop um, I might have even gotten smaller than a third, actually. Um, I, I think a third would have been just fine. But I, I get what you're saying, like small size on the small size on the turn. Why mm -hmm. small instead of you know starting to size up here with you know once the once the flop gets checked back, we probably feel really good about having the best hand a decent amount of the time. Um, would you ever think about sizing up here and thinking, hey, maybe you'll be just get called by spade draws, king jack, queen jack, king ten, queen ten? Um, I'm ace, ten. I'm a little bit hesitant to size up because i want to get called by hands like queen jack mm -hmm. and queen 10 and king jack and king 10 and <clears throat> i'm hesitant about like 70 percenting it um because i think those hands are way more likely to fold facing the 70 percent bet and 30 yeah. percent just puts a lot of pressure on their pair plus draw region which in my mind would be like the primary value targets um for us so yeah. you know yeah, if we have like a set of queens if we have a set of queens like we could Talk about you know sizing up to like seventy percent to target their uh, ace x and king x. I think that's reasonable. Um, but when we have an ace, they have less aces in their range, and I think the range you're targeting is made up of a lot of like second pair dipans. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I was thinking something similar that the only 
extra thing that I was thinking was like, Hey, you know, we, you said you talked about checking some of your, uh, some of your hands on, on ace king four, because it's like a board where we have lots and lots of strong hands. We have a huge range advantage. Basically another way of saying that is that we have a, um, somewhat of a lack of bluffs. I think that's even more true on the turn queen where our range is still very strong and connects really well with this board. We probably don't have that many, very many, if any low equity hands that we want to bet on the turn. Like we're probably not betting hands like queen Jack and King Jack ourselves. Um, Tough story to sell to when we get this hugely advantageous flop and we check. Yeah. That I have like seven, eight of diamonds or something. Right. 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 By checking um, there, there's that also other layer of like, when the board is very advantageous for the preflop three better, and they have a hand that is uh, doesn't really connect with the board very much, most of the value comes from betting a third <laughs> and putting mm-hmm. pressure on the hands that they can fold. Um, yeah. so, so when you don't bet a third, you narrow down your range you, to... You, yeah, you probably range, don't have nothing. <laughs> yeah, you, your, your range starts kind of looking like what it is. Um, yeah. Just starts being a little bit more well-defined and a little bit yep. more face-up. Yep. Um, so you bet like 20% actually. So you went smaller. And villain raises. So now I'm having all the thoughts that you literally just mentioned like i've narrowed down my range quite a bu- bunch by checking the flop i think and maybe even picking the small size on the turn i feel like you know you said maybe size up with a hand like pocket queens or something like that i was starting to get like really insecure and self-conscious about villain being able to read into both of those two data points the flop check and the and the small size here thinking like oh maybe i'm i'm splitting sizes um I very well could be. I don't know what I'm doing in this spot. So. <laughs> <laughs> Which means you almost certainly are splitting sizes um, because you don't know what you're doing. Uh, I would, look, I would just fold the turn, I think. Ooh. I just, like I said, your your hand is relatively face up. Villain really needs to be getting after it to um, raise here. And I just, it's, it's hard for villain to be getting after it, I think. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, 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 I would just be inclined to just fold the turn. Like I, and I know that sounds a little crazy. It's just, they have a lot of incentive to call with all their pair plus draws. So like when they raise, I'm like, what are you raising with? That's like not better than my hand. Ah. <sighs> I guess I just got too. I was just too in the weeds about like they know what my hand is. They could probably find this raise with all sorts of stuff because I've you know because I didn't know what I was doing on earlier streets and I've probably just like put a sign on my head saying like hey this is like the type of hand that I have when I check the flop and bet the turn is right some sort of like top pair we kicker. So then um, like let's talk about the defense of that right like if that's your typical hand right yeah is the defense to just like start raising a ton. Well, with hands I can't call. <sighs> like what? Seven, eight of diamonds, I guess. <laughs> I like, know. is that is that a thing that like we, we... aids make the most sense here? Some sort of jack x, maybe like some sort of ten x. Um, yeah. Like I said, I'm I'm ashamed of it. <laughs> like <laughs> my entire thought process in this hand. Nice. Uh, this is definitely going to be one of those where we wipe the whiteboard clean. Um, I think. So you call. Uh, I would already be just very scared and feel very nervous about the situation. I was and, nervous. Oh, shoot. They don't have any bluffs. Yeah. Now the river completes the backdoor flush. Um, you have the ace of spades. It doesn't which, matter because they never raised the ace of spades on the turn. It does matter. It does what? matter. Because in the same way that uh, last week, I said that when the nine pairs, it gives you some solace that like you actually do have good hands here. Like mm. you don't have to call with ace jack because you have the ace of spades, which means you've got all the ace x of spades in your range, right? Or maybe not all of them, but a lot of them. So like you yeah. are protected in that you've got nut flushes. Yeah. Um, and that's an important point uh, because that creates less pressure for you to call with your bluff catchery type hands, such as ace jack. Well, it, sh- it should put less pressure on. People. It should. It should. Yeah, yeah. Um, fill in jams, and I'm just gonna go on a limb and say that you you don't find the fold button. Yeah, 
you don't. Oh man. Whoa. Oh, my God. <laughs> you found the Queen Jack of Spades. Well diamonds, done, diamonds. sir. Hmm? Queen Jack of Diamonds. You said Queen Diamonds, Jack of diamonds. diamonds. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I was I was already expecting I, this I, I don't feel good about this hand even. I don't think you should feel good about yeah, this. Hand. Yeah. You won the hand. I have no earthly idea. <laughs> Maybe this will be one of those where, like, I, I'm laying in bed at night and I'm like, maybe John's a secret genius. Let's no, try to no, no, figure out, like, no. what he did here that made this happen. I don't know what you did that made this happen. Um, probably villain, like, rolled 100 or something. And was, <laughs> on the turn. And just I don't even know, like, what, what rolling high or low does. Like, I, I know that uh, somebody called me a psychopath, I think, for saying that high was aggressive. I don't see any other way of doing it. For yeah, any of you uh, like uh, RNG people, like how could how could high not uh, indicate the more aggressive action? That, I also awesome. rolled high. That's that's what I I rolled. Mm. He rolled a hundred, and I also rolled a hundred. And mm. this is what happens when two, two masters people. at work. Mm. Two masters at work. Um, two professional rollers. The hand basically played itself. Yeah. What can what can either of us do? <laughs> the RNG. The um, RNG guided us. To be fair. I kind of like villain's line with Queen Jack. Honestly. I really like it, which is why I really don't like my like why I don't feel good about my like. I think the way I put that, I just feel like I got outplayed and kind of just just button clicked my way into. Yeah, getting lucky. Like their hand is like quite good for this situation because they block two pair and they block sets and they block straights mm -hmm. and that just means that you have a lot of hands like this in your range, mm -hmm. and they can put a lot of pressure on your one pair of hands. Unfortunately for them they're putting a lot of pressure on an object that appears to be immovable. So it doesn't really matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter how good yeah, they played it or how much I pressure. I also know that you know that these are the hands that I have in my range. <laughs> like, yeah. It's, and so uh, I'm just going to call. I'm going to close my eyes and click call and that, that'll hope be that. hope that you're aggressive, yeah. an aggressive 1K reg. To be fair, um, in the strategy that I suggested deploying, there, there, there are these holes, right, that like, you know, you can be exploited if somebody does something like this with Queen Jack of Diamonds. My general thought is that most people don't do things like this with Queen Jack of Diamonds, but this player, kudos to them, man. I actually, like, I'm, I'm, I think they play this hand very, very, very <laughs> well. Uh, yes. uh, um, so, you know, they ran, they need to move up to 2K where people respect their raises. I guess that's that, <laughs> almost that's like feel like point. I should apologize to this guy, right? It's like, yo, sorry, I'm I'm really bad at poker and didn't let you get that that sick playthrough. I really, you know, that was that was really well played and well done. I just just ran into a fish. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, sorry, bud. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, with that said, we'll segue now to hand number two. And if you're listening in your car and wondering whether or not I've actually seen these hands beforehand i promise i have not <laughs> i did not know that john was going to win this one stick around after the break are you a lone wolf searching for the ultimate pack the cpg wolf program is a close-knit brotherhood hell-bent on one thing only chasing poker greatness Powered by Bleeding Edge Wolf Strats and led by Coach Brad and his lieutenants, CPG Wolves are systematically prepared for almost any spot they'll encounter on the green felt. If you want to plug into an elite team and have a step-by-step -step game plan to realize your full poker potential, you can apply at cpgwolves.com. Space is limited, and the pack is only as strong as its weakest member. So only the hungriest, grittiest, and most driven will be accepted into the program. Applications are open at cpgwolves.com. All right. Welcome back from the break. We got Bluff Catcher Numero Dos coming at you. Jumping straight in. John is battling in the streets of 1K No Limit online. The, what are they? The hijack opens to 22. John has two nines on the button. He three bets to 70. Blinds fold. John gets four bet to 188. So 18 bigs. And John calls with his nines. Um, every action pre flop with your nines is very standard, very normal. Yep. Hijack uh, seems like Greg, the 2.2x open. Um, 
one thing that seemed a little funky was this small uh small yeah. four bet it's definitely so on trending the on the side. small side mm -hmm. not i mean was going to peel the nines anyways i guess i'm happy to peel for a slightly better price so sure not not much to talk about i guess but definitely a data point is is the smaller yeah, smaller than normal mm -hmm. um queen four four flop rainbow 391 in the pot uh villain has 782 john's got him covered so villain bets quarter which is the expectation john calls which is the expectation with nines um now there's 607 in the pot villain has 673 turns a five Dylan bets close to a third on the turn, setting up what would be a half pot jam if they so opted to jam. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, this is just the size, the turn size. It's yep. this or a quarter. So I, I don't know how much we can read into this. We just sort of have to decide, like, what are we doing with our bluff catchers, like pocket nines facing quarter, quarter. Um, um, if we I, call here, are we ever folding to the the half pot on the river? Just like a lot of, yeah. So, I'm on the fence. I think my tendency would just be to fold the turn. Um, I have a lot of hands in my range that can call the turn, like all the queen x, king queen, ace queen, queen jack. I'm Queen Again, two. like this is a spot where I think we have hands that are worse than nines that would rather that we would rather have to call the turn a hand like ace jack of hearts, king jack of hearts, all the flush know, draws. You, yeah, we we have we, like the back to our flush draws um, in our range that we can call and fold if we brick um, in our range. So like to me, I just I think nines is not going to be doing super incredible here. Very difficult for them to improve. Um, we have a lot of hands to defend with. And so because of that, I would just like, I would just fold the turn here with, with this hand. Yeah. So you know what I'm going to do? Yeah. You call. <laughs> um, River's an eight. It's also possible too, that you have hands like six, seven in your range too. Like, so um, with back doors mm -hmm. on queen four, four, because you do three bet with some pseudo connectors and then you do call the four bet <laughs> with pseudo connectors. Uh, yep. It's pretty standard uh, pre-flop protocol. So you do have straights in your range here, even though, you know, you have boats in your range here now with eights, considering you have nines in your range. So you, you have like a lot of hands that can call the jam. Um, so again, like I would just fold to the river jam, I think with nines, uh, but I folded on the turn. So, you know, I just, I, I've been gone no. a long time. I was more like, I wasn't as much thinking in terms of like, what are the better hands to continue with on the turn or, or what are the better hands to call with on the river? I was mostly just thinking in terms of pot odds and just thinking about like, okay, if they do this with ace, queen, aces, kings, and their bluffs are ace, king, king, jack, and king 10, um, <laughs> getting three to one on the river is definitely going to be good enough. That being said, I don't know if they do, you know, they go for all three streets with those hands. I don't even know if they four bet king jack suited and king 10 suited that at the frequency they're supposed to they i would guess that they almost certainly four bet ace queen offsuit and an ace king suited or ace king the ace kings um mm -hmm. pure so that's like maybe one one reason to to start thinking about folding nines but still we're getting three to one on the river i mean yeah then again this is this is your world i folded i checked out on the turn so yep. on the river i've i've already pre-folded the turn um I imagine based on everything you said, by the way, before I, I clicked forward that you, you, you're you calling because it seems as if you're, <laughs> you, your mind is... I was calling the river when I called the turn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I wonder how... I wonder... Yeah, I wonder how often, like, villains recognize that <laughs> they're setting I'm up doing that. for... Uh, half pot jam on the river and i mean i have hands that call the turn that don't call the river right like jack ten of hearts or king jack of all, the, all those hands six yeah seven. and what hands does villain have that like is really excited about folding out jack ten <laughs> well you're 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 not excited about folding them out but you're just trying not to get bluffed by them i guess i guess that $17 on the, on the river. 
see what happens. Then you jam and then you wonder if you induce and you end up pawing with Ace King High. And that's true. That's true. Yeah. Then we have a technical Tuesday episode. Yeah. <laughs> Villain has Ace Queen off. Um, again, so final board was Queen 4, 4, 5, 8. Uh, so John lost. Um, and yeah. So at least I folded once um, and it was good. We'll mm-hmm. see. See get what one the, more chance. Get one more chance here um, on the final hand. You have Jack Ten of Clubs. You open cutoff. Oh shit! Wrong hand. Wrong hand. E... Oh no no no! Never mind. Sorry sorry sorry. Right hand. Wow. I thought I was in the small blind. I don't know why I thought I gave you the wrong Jack Ten, but I was in the cutoff. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Don't know if this will get edited out, but you can just we have two weeks edit. So. Hear the lack of attention to detail in John's voice. Look at him. He doesn't <laughs> care. I'm telling you guys, he doesn't care about you at all. Look, look at this. Um, <laughs> all right, let's just start this hand over. Let's start this. <laughs> so John has the Jack Ten of Clubs, as previously stated. Uh, he opens to twenty five dollars in the cutoff. The button three bets him to eighty. John four bets to 235, so chunks the Jack 10 suited into his four bet range, and the villain calls. So, yeah, a um, little bit, little bit uh, spicy with the, the four bet, I think, but it's a hand that can fall into Roll the 100. Bet, so. What can I do? Yeah, what can you do? Flop is king, king, eight with the king, eight of spades, king of diamonds. It's a four bet pot. Um, Just gonna start out with the C bet, very very small. It's what I do for my pots. Um, yeah, <clears throat> king king eight. I think <clears throat> maybe slightly favorable for us, but I think kind of like neutral in the sense that button still has tons and tons of king x that are gonna three bet and peel the four bet. Um, so don't really feel strongly about the flop in in either direction. Just gonna start out with a small C bet plan yeah. on. So we have our. This is not quarter. This is like 20%. And villain calls. So you bet 96 into 485. And villain calls. Um, John has 668 left. Again, the flop is king, king, eight, two spades. John has jack, 10 of clubs. Turn is a jack of spades. So flush completing. And in John's case, second pair completing turn card. Um, 677 in the pot. SPRs are on one. You check. I think that's like pretty. I think I'm checking my whole range here. We have SPR one, flush yeah. completing turn in a spot where you know the guy who peels the preflop four bet likely has many more suited hands than the than the guy who's four betting. I'm not sure if checking range is like. I'm not sure, honestly. Like, mm-hmm. I think ace king and king queen. Like, there is a part of your range that like betting is really really good and checking is not so good, mm-hmm. um, and that's the trip portion, I believe. Uh, also, maybe if you have like nine ten of spades or something like that, like you have a flush, I think that those parts of your range probably want to bet the turn too. Like so I, I, I would, flush. yeah, I would kind of challenge that your check that mm. your range check here and think that you probably do, you probably ought to have some bets. Mm. I don't know if Jack ten of clubs is one of those bets. Almost certainly not, but you know, you probably do want to have some hands that bet the turn here. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think that makes sense. Those naked trips without, you know. Uh, the naked trips and like the lower flushes that are can definitely get called by worse hands and you know are a little bit vulnerable to like the the four flush run out or or whatever. Um, ace queen with the ace of spades, ace queen with the queen of spades, um, mm-hmm. even like ace queen of diamonds, something like that can also, um, you know, probably just bet the turn, uh, yep. chunk it into the range, and it just kind of makes sense. But yeah, I would be checking like all of my single paired ha- hands. I think gotcha. that like just checking all single paired hands, betting. Some of my not single paired hands, uh, namely the trips and flushes. Uh, hmm. Maybe I don't know. I never have eights full, um, so don't really have that. Jacks full, maybe. Um, might bet jacks full too. But anyway, you check. Villain bets small, and I don't think there's anything you can do but call here. Oh, hope that the. River goes check, check. Um, I think villains, you know, can be betting small here with hands that you actually beat, like nines and tens that 
um, want to check back and mm. yeah. So I think like here, um, the <sighs> price that you're getting is six to one getting six to one is quite good. Um, you are going to win like when it goes check, check at showdown. I think you win most of the time when it goes check, check on the river. Um, assuming the river's a blank. Like they maybe they don't value that mm. ace jack. Queen's jams pre. They don't value bet queen jack, but when they check back the river, they, they clearly don't have trips. They clearly don't have flushes. They clearly you don't, don't think have they bet queen jack, but they bet like nines and tens here. They might. Maybe. So at a small frequency, you lose at showdown. Okay. But it's a smallish frequency, I think. My read on the situation was that none of those hands would bet the turn. Yeah. The queen jack, the nines, and the tens. That's what I thought. Um, and so I, I guess my read on the situation was that the buttons quarter pot on the turn is very polar and less less mergy with like those middling middle. It's kind of interesting, hands. right? Because I think that, that your your opinion comes from the perspective of your checking your range. But I don't think that that's necessarily how your opponent could interpret the situation in yeah. that you've got bets and checks here. And so mm -hmm. like when you have bets and checks, there is some removal when you check the turn. Right. From like this like, guy might bet nines thinking like, oh, like I can still get called by like ace queen with a spade or like, you know, get some protection from like ace queen with a spade or something like that. Right. Exactly. Gotcha. Exactly. Okay. Wow. Okay. So, I mean, given my read on the situation, I actually just folded jack 10. Really? Here, which is wild because like the last few hands where you said you would have folded earlier, I didn't fold and here you said you would continue and I decided to fold. Um, yeah, I, I thought that, you know, I, I thought a lot about, like, I had a lot of thoughts that were very similar to what you said in the previous hand about, like, if I'm checking range here, do I actually have hands that I would prefer to continue that aren't maybe not as strong as Jack-10, like a hand like Ace-Queen with a spade or, um, you know, I thought I was checking range here, so I have boats, trips, uh, flushes, and maybe I can just continue with with all those, and, and that's enough. Um, in any case, like, I I thought that this bet was less mergy, less linear, and I would, I would be facing a, a river bet pretty frequently. Um, once I face this bet, again, all, all that was me reading into like me checking range on the turn and probably projecting that the button also thinks that I'm checking range on the turn. Um, and we'll know that I, you know, still have tons and tons of strong hands, so uh, he probably won't start sticking it in with, you know, start sticking this quarter pot out there with like nines with a spade, tens with a spade, hands that, you know, could get check raised and sort of feel like shit. I mean, they could bet with hand nines or tens that don't have a spade too, or even sure, like sure. seven, yeah. eight, or eight, nine. Yeah. Um, and then there's still like the range that I'm ahead of too, which is just like his ace queens, right? And queen tens and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Wow. Okay. I, yeah, I folded. <laughs> well, you know what's kind of bullshit about this situation is when I fold the turn, we get to play out the rest of the hand, but when you fold the turn, <laughs> we we get to play nothing. It's just over. We uh, just like well, we don't live I mean, in that side of the multiverse. We, might not, you we know? might not have to play out the rest of the hand, anyways. Yeah. Oof. Eight's full. Nice fold, John. <laughs> I, mean, I think. Maybe, maybe I don't know. Or a jack. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't think that we learn a ton from eight's full. Like you just learn that they flopped a boat good for them yep. we don't learn whether or not they bet nines or tens on the turn we don't right. learn how they interpret our our check on the turn he would bet the eights full on the river regardless of whether he thought i was checking range on the turn or not so yeah he's yeah. they they have a hand that like is just playing itself they don't really have to do any sort of thinking about anything so sad but um yeah it's interesting yeah i, I would i would have called the turn here i would have folded the turn in the last uh -huh. hand and yeah, yeah. hold it in the, the other one as well, because yeah, we were both kind of in the woodshed behind the woodshed in that one. <laughs> so yeah, it's all I, it's all we got for you this week here on tactical Tuesday. Thank you as always for listening, check out live cash preflop bootcamp. Be sure to subscribe. And if you have any situations that you'd like us to go through or any hands that you watch, you know, it may seem like, me and John just sit around and make podcast episodes, but you know, we, we actually have quite a few responsibilities in managing and running uh, the wolves and, you know, John with his playing all the time and me with 
all the wolf responsibilities and going as deeply into poker theory and strategy and understanding and data as I can possibly go every single week. So don't get a chance to watch a ton of like live streams or I don't anyway. Um, so any hands that you want us to break down from like, uh, any live streams that are going on where people are playing big pots or interesting hands, bring them to the village, send me a timestamp in an email with the, the YouTube link. And, you know, we can potentially cover them here on tactical Tuesday. So with that said, I'm out. That's all I got. See you next week. See you next week. Thanks for listening to chasing poker greatness. You can subscribe on Apple Podcasts or on your favorite podcast app. Go to ChasingPokerGreatness.com to get the newsletter. Join the Greatness Village community, book a coaching session, or dive into the latest data-driven poker courses. Follow the show on Twitter at CPG Podcast.